Uh, James Hamilton for MMA UK joined via Skype by Juan Arcoleta. Uh, Juan, thank you very much for giving us some time. Yeah, thank you for having me on. So, fresh off a massive victory at Bellator 222 and Madison Square Garden. Um, so, I guess we'll start right there. Uh, just talk us through that. It was a spectacular finish. And talk us through the finish and how you were feeling after that fight. Yeah, I mean, the whole lead up to everything was awesome. You know, uh, fighting a two time champ in Bellator, knowing that once I get this, once I get this victory, I'm going to be title contention ready. You know, and uh, the way the cards fell out were Horiguchi and Caldwell fought before me um, to see who the winner was going to be. Just made it that more impactful for me to go in there and do my job. And once the first round started out, got the fill out started, got started getting my range, my timing. And then, uh, you know, started feeling him really wanting to be aggressive. And every time I, I, I moved on him, I felt his reaction and thinking going into the third, this is going to be this is going to be easy money now, easy pickings. And uh, he wanted to end the round tough. And once he came in, connected. Slipped, slipped and rolled under his punch, and uh, the rest was history, you know. And uh, took a second to enjoy the crowd and 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 take everything in, and then uh, just erupted on my own. It was just like, oh, it's static. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's certainly one thing noticeable in the fight is your movement looked really good. Um, I think you had threw the overhand previous. Did, did you know that overhand was going to be there? Yeah, we practiced it a lot. I mean, if we did our, uh, you know, it's the same kind of overhand that I hit on Peralta. So, um, you know, it must be one of my signatures from Dan Henderson or something, you know. But, uh, uh, you know, knowing that uh, I had to fight him like TJ Dillashaw fought Hennon Burrell, I knew that once the time he came in and he committed, that those rolling hooks were going to land. Yeah, there was there was a couple of things about the fight in the lead up. Obviously, uh, I know Eduardo. There was a few things said online by him. Did that sort of did that add a little fuel as well going into the fight? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. It uh, just like letting people know, you know, that you know, if you talk mess, you're gonna have to answer for your for your words, you know. And uh, when it came to the fight, if all you wanted was a fight, just tell me. All you, all I want to do is, hey, let's fight, and I will fight, you know. But if you want to add the extra hoopla on it to try to build yourself up and build yourself confidence you're gonna have to answer for those for those words that you're saying and um so yeah it was, it was it was a little you know but once i got the knockout it just i didn't need to follow up i knew you know i knew and we talked afterwards and i told him i said hey man like if all you wanted was a fight that's all you had to say you don't have to do the extra you, you know there's there's one conor mcgregor and now well obviously james of what what he's doing i mean my mm -hmm. team doesn't play that. If he came and did that to my team, his head would get ripped off. But, uh, you know, just the, the extra antics, they're not paying me to entertain. They're, they're, they're paying me to go in there and fight and, and fight my ass off and, uh, you know, go on and put a performance that way. I, I don't need the extra um, entertainment aspect. Uh, but that's just because he doesn't know how to fight, so he has to add the extra entertainment to it. But me, I know how to fight. I know how to get the job done. And I'm going to entertain the crowd that way because that's what they're paying me for, not to be an, uh, a smack talker. Well, I would, I would certainly say um, the way you fought and the way you finished the fight, that was certainly entertaining enough. And I'm, I'm sure you've known people have reached out to you and let you know how spectacular that finish was. Um, also, you were fighting at MS uh, Madison Square Garden. Was that a little bit special for you as well, fighting in that arena and get, getting the win the way you did? Absolutely. I, I've seen so many fights there in my in my career or in my lifetime of big boxing matches with my dad, with my cousins, with my family. Uh, just being a kid and uh, on Saturdays and, and Fridays uh, watching TV and watching the big fights happen at Madison Square Garden and telling myself one day I'm going to do that. One day I'm going to do that. And for it to come to fruition after a big win, after a Andy uh andy ruiz knocking out anthony joshua after triple g getting the job done getting the knockouts like man how do i top that you know how do i go in there i was even telling my coach i was thinking like i gotta do something i have to have a crazy fight because the history here and and and, and the last two weeks what's been going on in this building they said stick to the game plan listen to us you idiot and go out there and fight and everything else is going to take care of itself and Sure enough, you get the walk-off knockout uh, by sticking to the game plan and going on Sports Center's top ten and like be on ESPN, being on everyone's uh, uh, blowing up and, and going viral is just it's just a dream come true, you know. And, and then to do it at Madison Square Garden is just speechless. Yeah, I think that was a, a walk-off KO. Even Mark Hunt would have been proud of. <laughs> yeah, absolutely.
Um, so obviously there was other implications in the fight. Um, uh, Caldwell and Horiguchi were fighting on the on the same card. Um, I believe you said before it you felt that Horiguchi would get the win on that fight, which is what happened. So I'm assuming now the plan for you is back down to 135 and compete for that belt against Horiguchi. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Horiguchi is the matchup to make right now. There's there's no better matchup in MMA right now other than me and Horiguchi. Uh, both on winning streaks. Both could bring a fight. Um, I'm sorry, one second. Yeah, uh, no problem. Yeah, uh, both both could bring a fight, and um, we're both we're both uh, entertainers, you know, and um, that's what we're gonna do. So the best matchup to make right now is with me and Horiguchi, and to putting it all out there on the line. And for you, is it just a case of making sure that the, the Bellator belt is the one he has to defend next? Because obviously he is holding two belts at the moment. But let's be honest, the Bellator belt is a more prestigious one. And with you being on the now an 18-fight winning streak, it, it does kind of make you undeniable for that that hit that challenge to him. Yeah, I, I think he has to put both of them on the line. You know, if, 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 you're, if you're a fighter, and I mean, if, if I was in this case, I'd put both of them on the line. Like, why not? You know, I'm, I'm the crown. I'll be able to defend both belts in one night. Like, you know, what's what's more gratifying? He beats me. He defended both belts, you know. But, uh, you know, if he, if he fights once, he's going to have to fight me again, you know. So uh, either way, you know, just make it happen. Do put both on the line and let's make it a memorable night. Who who else in history has defended two belts in, in one night? You know, why not make it history, you know, defend yeah. these belts. Do what do what Anthony Joshua did. He he had a change of opponent, and he still threw all of his belts on the line for for Andy Ruiz. You know, it's it's uh, you know, follow 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 suit and 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 believe in yourself that much that you're going to be able to throw both on the line and defend it. Yeah, and the other thing as well with with Horiguchi, I'm assuming it's not the belts. Obviously, are going to be the the main goal, but getting in there with a guy like Horiguchi who's got such a good pedigree and he's he's fought at the best and fought the best in the world. Is that something else that motivates you out with just the belts? Yeah, and that's why I want to fight him first instead of Pitbull. You know, I want to fight him now to let people know that I'm the best in the world. You know, I'm the best martial artist that I could possibly be, and I'm going to go out there and prove it against Horiguchi and. uh Horiguchi is more has a more prestigious name than than Pitbull right now, and that's why I want that fight. That's why it makes that fight interesting. That's why Bellator wants to fight so Bellator can get their title back and we could take the Ryzen belt back into our field. You know what? I mean, what a great opportunity, right, for R- R- Risen and and Bellator to be able to put both their titles on the line and 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 and, mm-hmm. and see who has the best. You know, see who has who who has the best fighters and. Um, Right now, I am the best fighter, and let me go out there, get our belt back, and take theirs and bring it to the States like you guys meant to do the first time. And I guess the other thing then, where well, you've mentioned uh, Pitbull, is is that something you're looking at for the future as well? Obviously, you're, you're fighting at 145, you've held uh, titles in different weight divisions, um, you obviously feel comfortable at 145. Is that a matchup you want to get in the future, especially him holding two belts himself? Yeah, absolutely, and that's another thing, you know, we're going to find out right now who, which champion says no first, whether it be Horiguchi or Pitbull, because what, my next fight, no matter what, I'm fighting for two belts, you know, same thing with Pitbull. If you have both these belts, throw both of them on the line, man. Like, don't, don't hesitate. When I fought for King of the Cage, I always told the promoter, I throw everything on the line when I go out there to fight. I don't care. Like, whatever weight class these people want to fight at, I throw all my, all my belts on the line. And we did. And we did that. We threw all the belts on the line. If someone beat me, they were going to take all, all four belts. But, yeah. you know, now, you know, I put my money where my uh, where, where my hard work was. I, I expect these these champions to do the same. Otherwise, why do you have b- both the belts? You know, uh, is it just for uh, uh, title reasons? Or are you really wanting to defend it? You know, the Spanish, the English, all, all these guys, every time they went into battle, they threw everything on the line. You know, they, they, they said, we're here to take over. You beat us. You have our land. You know, we beat you. We're going to take your land. Same same thing. You know, the, these wars are meant to take everything in sight. Yeah, excellent. And and just the other thing as well, I wanted to speak to me a bit about the team round, round about you. I know uh, Joe Daddy Stevenson's a massive, been a massive influence in your career. Can you just tell us a wee bit about the guys that are helping you day in, day out, and, and how much they've helped you achieve what you've achieved in the sport so far? 
Yeah, Joe Daddy Stevenson, man, he's been he's the he's been the start of of and 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 the and the been the driver of the ship uh through the background of my whole career, you know. And um coming along the way, him introducing his contacts to me, you know, going into Cub Swanson, Joe Benavidez, TJ Dillashaw, Paul Herrera, Tiki Gosen, um just all these people having impacts in my life and on my career and giving me advice and me applying it to my career because these guys know best. They've been in the sport for a very, very long time. And if I don't take their advice literally, then then I shouldn't be around these guys, right? So I, I, I make sure that any advice they give me, I implement it right away. You know, Raymond Daniels was helping me a lot with my movement, implemented it right away in this fight because I know they know, you know, they know how to fight. They know the sport. They've been around it long enough. They know the it's and, and, and the ins and the outs of the of the sport. And, uh, you know, and that's why I believe in these guys. And that's why I listen to them and believe in their advice so I could apply it to my career. Yeah. And if you're going to get uh, tips about striking and movement, Raymond Daniels is certainly not a bad person to go and speak to. <laughs> yeah. Raymond Daniels, he's he's one of the best of, of, of making you believe something's come. And he's an illusionist. That's what he is. He's one of the best illusionist fighters I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, and, and the other thing I, I noticed when I was looking through your uh, looking through your career is you're not only a talented fighter, but you've you've dipped your toes in the acting world as well. Yeah, absolutely. Been around acting, uh, you know, thanks to Joe Daddy Stevenson, he was an MMA consultant on the 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 hit show Kingdom, and uh, with Nick Jonas, Frank Gorilla, Mark Consuelos, Jonathan Tucker, uh, and and Matt Lauria, and a, and a lot of the other people that were in there. So yeah, we, we, we did, we did our time in there and it was a good time and it was a, a little bit different for sure. <laughs> but for me, I was able to train every day and, 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 and live the fight lifestyle. And, um, and now it, 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 they also gave me some really good advice that I've applied in my career and it's been paying dividends of just, you know, not going out there and expecting or, or trying to demand something that you don't deserve go out there and take it, go out there and work your ass off so that when, when, it, when the time comes, I'm ready. You know, I just had one of the biggest knockouts of my life and one of the biggest fights of my career. And now the next step, I'm ready. Instead of not being prepared, now I'm prepared. I'm, I'm 24 fights in and I'm prepared for whatever they give me next. And the other thing as well, if you had a chance to just, you know, take, take in the win at MSG and celebrate a wee bit with your team, just enjoy what you've accomplished there before you move on to the next thing. Yeah, absolutely. Just sit back and uh, got to sit back and take it all in, you know, and, and that's one thing my my dad has told me from the beginning. Make sure you enjoy it. You know, don't be so yeah. don't be too serious. You know, it's hard. It's hard to say that and not do it. But because it, it truly is, you know, it's it's stressful. You know, you're fighting for the most money you ever fought in your life. You're fighting for a two time champion at Madison Square Garden, sold out arena. There's been a title fight that just went before you that was kind of a, a snoozer, you know, and you're not wanting to do the same thing. And you watch your best friend Aaron Pico get knocked out the, the fight before as well. And so just the emotions, man, just the sitting back there, the morale in the locker room because he was in my locker room was kind of like, uh, like real, like, like being in the library. You have to be, you know, it's, it's weird, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a scary feeling, you know, and, um, be able to soak it all in and just pray, pray to, pray to God that, um, uh, you're there to perform and let his will be done and, and, and just seize the moment. And then afterwards being able to take it all in, see my family and my, my kids throwing their hands up and they're going crazy. It, 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 I was so thankful and had to drop to my knees and thank God for it. Brilliant. And, and just the last question for me, one, then I'll let you, I'll let you go. Has, uh, has Bellator, have they mentioned a possible timeline for a title fight with uh, Horaguchi? Has there been any word on anything at all? So it gets complicated, right? So they, mm -hmm. they have to make sure that uh, uh, Saki and Horiguchi are first going to accept the fight. And mm -hmm. then from then, they have to find out what fight card they're going to throw it on because it's a big fight. It's a big, it, there's a lot at stake. It's a lot of meaning towards it. So a lot more goes into it. Um, you're dealing with two different organizations on the time frame of that. I mean, for the UFC, right, it's easy. They just pull the trigger. It's yeah. done. Yeah. And then they put their uh, media team around it. They market it, and it's the next biggest fight in the world. Uh, I think since we're dealing with two different promotions and and uh, two of the best uh, athletes, we got. I, I'm okay, but we have to make sure he's okay, that he's yeah. ready, that his team's ready. We got to make sure we have an arena, the fans are wanting it, and so I think it goes in a little more of a time span. 
which is okay with me. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll be ready whenever that time, when that time comes, but, um, just seizing the moment, knowing that that's going to be next, that that's, that's the only part that's going to make sense. And just, so just what you've said there, um, would there be something in place then if, if for example, Horiguchi didn't defend the belt, um, I presume you would fight, uh, fight against someone else. He would bring someone else to, for you to contest. Is that, is that something you've thought about at all? If Horiguchi didn't, uh, come over and fight for the belt or belt? I don't think he really has an, uh, an option. You know, I, hmm. I, I don't see why he would fight someone less of an opponent than me. Um, yeah. You know, I don't know who he would uh, really decide to defend against. That's on the 18-fight win streak, a four-division champ. I can make the weight. I make an entertaining fight. I could fight in a ring. I could fight anywhere. Um, why not, you know? And then, so if he backs out and he doesn't want to take the challenge, uh, I'm fighting for two titles against Pitbull, and that's, and that's the next fight to make. Perfect. Well, again, thank you very much for the for the time this evening or this afternoon, rather out in California. Uh, we do we do appreciate you popping on, have a chat, and I look forward to seeing you back in the Bellator cage. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your fans for tuning in as well. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Have a good one. Right. Bye.